Too Old to Die Young is a Amazon Prime 10 episode limited show. It's 13 hours long and it's directed and created by Nicholas Winding Refn. Those who don't know, he is the same director that gave us Drive, Only God Forgives, Neon Demon, Apollo Rising, Bronson. He's a director that in the art house community, he's well known. Um, in terms of mainstream, uh, maybe Drive, I would say I, it reached a little bit of mainstream audiences, but this is a show I was very much so excited for. Um, based on the trailer, I was like, wow, this is going to be a beautiful show per usual. And I'm going to kick off by saying the premise. The premise is eventually about a character named Martin, played by Miles Teller, who he's going through a lot in his life. He just did a violent act. He's witnessed a lot of violent acts and he's not too happy with it. And he wants to kind of change that about his life. He wants to have purpose and he's in a relationship with a minor and he comes across John Hawk's character who thinks that he could potentially help him. That's the gist of the show. Um, but in a nutshell, the messages are nihilism in America and how it's inevitable. And it's very, very hard to get past the fact that all these characters are very nihilistic. Um, but that's what makes the show interesting because it's just so, so nihilistic, but at the same time, so beautiful. I mean, the cinematography is gorgeous. I mean, if you're a Nicholas Wendy Ruffin fan, you probably already knew that was gonna be the case, but I am just mind blown that he has such details with all of the color palette, especially considering he's colorblind. Like I found this out a couple months ago and I was like, Wow, that's mind blowing because he's one of those auteurs where when his film's on screen, you know it's his film. And it's just kind of interesting because it's like, wow, he's colorblind and yet he has some of the best cinematography in the game. Love it. Cliff Martinez's score is also stellar. Um, I absolutely love it. I'm a big Cliff Martinez fan, but he does such a great job with the score, having little nuanced beats, and then when it needs to kick into action, it really, really is stellar. There's some romantic themes. It's just stellar the acting across the board is also great um i loved william baldwin's character um he he growls um yeah he, he growls this is a strange show i love it i absolutely love it um but he growls he's a very oddball character but i absolutely dug it i really liked um you know miles teller in the lead role i thought he was great john hawks shows up gina malone she's also great i forget the actor's name who played jesus but he was also stellar um, it's overall just a very well-acted show that just hits all the marks on the technical aspect. Like, going into the show, there's no way someone is thinking, you know what, I don't think it's going to be a well-shot show. I don't think it's going to sound great. I don't think it's going to be well-acted. So it checks all the boxes for me. It really does. But I just want to say this. From a technical aspect, it's flawless. But I am not going to lie and say that one of the reasons why I'm late to the reviewing game with this show is because after the first couple episodes, I decided to take my time. And it wasn't for the fact that I thought the show was terrible. It's just the fact that I was kind of realizing that this is kind of like Twin Peaks The Return and that I can explain a little exposition. Twin Peaks The Return, I watched that week to week. I loved that show. But when I was watching it, I thought it was just good. I thought I was missing something. And then after the show had ended, I started thinking about it more and more and more. And I realized, I was like, wow, this was a great show. In retrospect, I really dug it. And I was like, I feel like this is the same type of situation. And I'm glad I took my time with it because if you would ask me my thoughts in the first three, four episodes, I would have said it's kind of dull. It's beautiful. It's outrageously, incredibly well acted, but it's just kind of dull. I would have said yes, that probably would have been my thoughts on the whole show, but because I took my time with the remaining episodes, I actually really dug this show. I do have to say, though, I think the finale is very, very, very weak. Um, it's, I don't know, it felt like almost like Nicholas Winning Rapper was kind of trolling us as the audience, and I, I guess I can respect that, but at the same time, I was like, dude, come on, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of those viewers that wants satisfaction, but at the same time, I kind of want resolution, at least a little bit, but... At the same time, I think this show is good. I think if you are an art house fanatic, you will probably really dig this show. If you really like exploitation films, you'll probably also really like this because this show slash film, because I, I know I've been saying film slash TV show, that's because this is essentially a 13 hour movie. If you like exploitation, you will definitely like this show because at the end of the day, there is some of the most outrageously horrific violence that you will see in anything. It's very hard to watch. Same goes for nudity and sex. It's it's like, wow. It's definitely non-traditional, and I really appreciate that. I like it when a show slash movie has the balls to actually showcase stuff that you hear about, and some people might take part in, but 
you never actually get to see them actually focus on that. And I really dug that the show had the balls to actually do that. I think it's a very ambitious show, even at the same time, if the story itself is very simplistic, I think with how they went about it, it worked. Is it flawed? Yes. I do think, again, that final episode does damper the whole mood of the show. And I do also think that the pacing is a bit slow. And that can kind of hamper, I feel like, rewatchability value. And I do also think that the show definitely could have... I know I said slow down like it was slow, but I definitely think it could have been tighter. And I think if it was tighter, it probably would have been better, more as like a, an eight-episode show. But nonetheless, I, I can't lie. Too Old to Die Young, I really dug the show. I think it was good. I would definitely recommend it to someone that can appreciate films as an art form. A mainstream goers, no. No way I'm going to recommend this. No. But, um... At the end of the day, Too Old to Die Young, I'll be giving it a 4 out of 5 star rating, which, for those like hot sauce rating, it's the good old Louisiana Pure Crystal Hot Sauce. This is a good show. I would recommend it. And, again, you can look at it as a film. You can look at it as a show because Refn himself kind of looks at it as a film. So that's why in this review I'm kind of like, hey, screw it. I'll say film show. I'll say whatever. But, um, anyways, guys, Too Old to Die Young, what did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you not? Did you think it was pretentious or did you think it was artful? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And do you want a season two? Again, comment section down below. And as always, get the subscription, notification bell, and I'll catch you guys later.